Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Microservices are a game changer for building scalable, resilient applications. But running them, especially in the cloud, requires a solid platform. If you're looking at Azure, the ideal place to host your microservices is often Azure Kubernetes Service, or AKS. Today, we're going to walk through a typical microservice architecture built on AKS. This diagram gives us a great snapshot of the key components involved. At the heart of it all is AKS. This is Azure's managed Kubernetes service. The fantastic thing here is that Azure handles the heavy lifting of managing the Kubernetes control plane, the brain of the cluster. You get to focus on your agent nodes, where your actual application containers run. Your AKS cluster lives within an Azure virtual network. AKS sets this up for you automatically, but for more advanced setups, you can create and configure your own network, giving you full control over subnets and how your cluster fits into your broader network topology. How do users access your microservices? Client apps make requests, and traffic first hits an Azure load balancer. This distributes incoming internet traffic across your cluster. Inside the cluster, we typically use Ingress. Think of Ingress as your cluster's API gateway. It exposes specific HTTP or HTTPS routes from outside the cluster and directs the traffic to the correct microservice running inside. Within the Kubernetes cluster, you'll deploy your microservices. The diagram shows them often organized into namespaces, logical groupings like front-end services, back-end services, and utility services, things like Elasticsearch or Prometheus for monitoring, as shown here. Each service runs as one or more pods, which are the smallest deployable units in Kubernetes, containing your containers. Kubernetes handles things like pod auto-scaling to adjust based on load. Microservices themselves are often stateless, but they need to store data. For stateful operations, they'll connect to external data stores. Azure offers excellent options here, like Azure SQL Database for relational data or Azure Cosmos DB for highly scalable NoSQL databases. Where do your microservice container images live before deployment? In Azure Container Registry. This is where you store your private Docker images securely. AKS can easily pull these images using its managed identity. Getting your code from development to production smoothly is critical. That's where CI slash CD comes in. Azure Pipelines, part of Azure DevOps, is a great tool to automate your build, test, and deployment processes. And Helm, a Kubernetes package manager, simplifies defining, installing, and managing your applications on the cluster. This automates pushing your Docker images and deploying your Helm charts. For security and management, Microsoft Entra ID, formerly Azure Active Directory, is used for creating and managing identities and controlling access to your Azure resources. And to keep an eye on everything, Azure Monitor collects metrics, logs, and telemetry data from your cluster and services, essential for monitoring health, setting up alerts, and troubleshooting issues. The diagram also shows Azure Key Vault for securely managing secrets. Finally, when running on the cloud, thinking about costs is important. Remember to use the Azure Pricing Calculator to estimate costs and always refer to the Azure Well-Architected Framework for guidance on building cost-effective, reliable, secure, and performance solutions. So, putting it all together, AKS provides a powerful, managed foundation for your microservice architecture on Azure. With components like load balancers, ingress, external data stores, robust CI slash CD, security integration, and comprehensive monitoring, you have all the building blocks to deploy, scale, and manage your microservices effectively. Are you using microservices or AKS? What are your biggest tips? Let me know in the comments below.